Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ruthie and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 43 of Swimsuit by James Patterson and Maxine P. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest you click off the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 43. It was almost four in the morning and I hadn't slept, my mind still burned with the images of Rosa Castro's tortured body, thinking of what had been done to her before her life ended under the rock in the sea. I thought about her parents and the McDaniels and that these good people were suffering a kind of hell that these, that uh, Heron most Bosch couldn't have imagined, not on his most inspired day or night. I wanted to call Amanda, but I didn't. I was afraid I might slip up and tell her what I was thinking. Thank God we don't have kids. I swung my legs over the bed, turned on the lights. I've got a can of POG out of the fridge, a passion fruit, orange, and guava drink, and then I booted up my laptop. My mailbox had filled with spam since I checked it last, and CNN had sent me a news alert on Rosa Castro. I scanned the story quickly, finding that Kim was mentioned in the last paragraph. I quickly typed Kim's name into the search box to see if CNN had dragged any new tidbits into their net. They had not. I opened the can of Pringles, ate just one, made coffee with the complimentary drip coffee maker, then <coughs> then pecked away at the internet some more. I found Dougie Hill videos on YouTube, frat house clips and locker room antics, and a video of Kim sitting in the stand of a football game, clapping and stomping. The camera went back and forth between her and shots of Cahill playing against the New York Giants, nearly decapitating Eli Manning. I tried to imagine Cahill killing Kim, and I couldn't rule out the guy that a guy who could slam into 300 pounders was a guy who could get physically with a restraint girl and accidentally or on purpose break her neck. But in my heart, I believed that Cahill's tears were real, that he loved Kim, and logically, if he had killed her, he had no means to get lost anywhere in the world by now. So I sent my browser out to search for the name that female tipster had whispered in my ear, the suspected arms dealer, Niles, middle name, Ostrich Born. The search returned the same leads I'd gotten the day before, but this time I opened the articles that were written in Swedish. Using an online dictionary, I translated the Swedish words for mul munchens and body armor, and then I found another photo of Born dated three years earlier. It was a candid shot of a man with the regular, almost forgettable features getting out of a Ferrari in Geneva. He was wearing a handsome chalk striped suit under a well-cut and top coat carrying a Gucci briefcase. Bourne looked different in this photo by the way he looked at the industrialist black tie dinner because Bourne's hair was now blonde, white blonde. I clicked on the last of the articles about Niles or or Streg born and another photo filled my screen this one of a man in a military uniform he looked about 20 or so had wide spaced eyes and a boxy chin and he looked nothing like the other photos of niles born i'd seen i read the text beneath the photo and made out the swedish words for persian gulf the enemy fire and then it hits me i was reading an obituary niles born austrian born has been dead for 15 years i went to shower let the hot water beat down on my head as I tried to fit the pieces together. Was this simply a case of two men with the same unusual name, or had someone using a dead man's identity checked into the Wayla Princess? If so, had he abducted and possibly murdered Kim McDaniels? That is the end of this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!